We've all used computers that run too slowly for our liking, but some scientists would like to run programs that are so complex that just to finish them would take longer than the age of the universe. One solution to this problem would be to build a quantum computer. But what does that mean? Well, normal computers like this store information as bits. That's loads of ones and zeros. But quantum bits are different because they can try out being one and zero at the same time. And this can be much more powerful for solving certain problems. We've found that bismuth atoms in silicon are great quantum bits. Each bismuth atom has an electron, a spare electron, which can be influenced by magnets. So here's a magnet. This is the north pole of the magnet. And here's the south pole. And when we put an electron into the magnet, then it lines up with a magnetic field, just like a compass needle. And we can control this electron with microwaves. So here's down, and this is up. And the up and down are just like the one and zero for our quantum bit. Unfortunately, our electron is constantly prone to interference from nearby atoms that are out of our control. And the more time we waste, the greater the chance that our poor electron will suffer from interference, making it unusable to us. Now this electron is coupled to a bismuth nucleus. Using this as an extra quantum bit would really help out. We can control this smaller compass needle too, but as it's smaller, it takes longer to control, and we need to use radio waves instead of microwaves. The good news is that as it's slower to respond, it's less prone to interference from these nearby rogue atoms. Unfortunately, in the time that we spend controlling our bismuth nucleus, these rogue atoms interfere with our electron. Frustrating to say the least. So what can we do? Well, this is where our new research comes in. If we reduce the magnetic field just enough, then the electron and the nucleus become hybridized. Our new experiments show that through hybridization, we can control both of them quickly with microwaves. It's a new way to make fast and slow quantum bits work together. There are loads more challenges to face before we have enough bits in our quantum computer to be able to do something really useful. But with this new design, with the hybridization, we're one step closer to being able to run really complex programs in the time it takes to drink a cup of tea instead of the whole lifetime of the universe.